Hello viewers, this is Wagda Ronald taking you through today's tutorial for a level applied mathematics. In this video, I'm going to go through the solutions to the assignment which was left in the previous video on linear motion involving one particle. So if you're in senior 5 and senior 6, this video will be best for you as long as you're offering math as part of your combination. Now these are the very questions I left in the previous video, so question 1, question 2, and also question 3, then also question 4. So I believe you have already tried them out and ready to go through the solution so that you can mark yourself and check your progress. So we are going to start with question 1. Now question 1 says, the speed of a taxi decreases from 90 kilometers per hour from 90 kilometers per hour to 18 kilometers per hour in a distance of 120 meters find the speed of the taxi when it had covered a distance of 50 meters so they have given you the initial velocity which is 90 kilometers per hour and i have to convert it to meters per second then the final velocity which is 118 kilometers per hour which also has to be converted to meters per second so the distance is in meters so it is there's no need to convert to that is the SI unit so those are the initial conditions and let us see how they can be used so first of all we are going to convert the 90 kilometers per hour into meters per second so 90 kilometers per hour to be converted you have to multiply by 1000 to convert the kilometers to meters then also divide by 3600 to convert the per hour to per second so in the end we shall come up with 25 meters per second so initial velocity in meters per second is 25 then also the final velocity has to be converted to meters per second so 18 kilometers per hour when converted to become 5 meters per second now from there we shall use the third equation of motion which is v squared equal to u squared plus 2as and when i substitute v is 5 and u is 25 a is unknown but the displacement is 120 meters so when i substitute that i realize that i have only one unknown and that is a so when i make a the subject i'll come up with a being equal to negative 2.5 meters per second squared so basically we have now got the acceleration which is negative 2.5 meters per second squared okay so now that we have used the initial conditions we can now go and answer the question as so the question says that find the speed of the taxi when it had covered a distance of 50 meters. So they want the, the value of V when S is 50. What we are going to do, we are going to go back in our third equation of motion. Third equation is that V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. Now when I make V the subject, means I'll put a square root to come up with V being equal to square root of U squared plus 2A. Is. next will be to substitute so where there is u i'll put 25 where there is a i'll put negative 2.5 and where there is s i'll put 50 so with that i'll be able to simplify and get my v value of v which is 19.3649 meters per second so basically that is the speed they want they wanted in this question now let's see how the five marks could come about So the first mark B1 will be for converting from mid kilometers per hour to meters per second. Then M1 is for you to substitute in the third equation of motion and B1 is for you to get the acceleration. Then M1 is for substituting in that equation and A1 is for you to get the output which they want. So basically that's how the five marks could come about. 
So now let's go to the solution to question 2. And question 2 says that a motorcyclist decelerated uniformly from 20 km per hour to 8 km per hour in 896 meters. Find his deceleration in meters per second. So this is the initial velocity will be 20 km per hour and final velocity will be 8 km per hour. The distance moved is 896 meters. So they want the value of deceleration. So well, the first thing to do will be to first convert from kilometers per hour to meters per second. So when I convert 20 kilometers per hour to meters per second, I have to multiply by 1000 to change to from kilometers to meters. Then I divide by 3600 to change from per hour to per second. So in the end, I'll come up with you, my u being equal to 50 over 9 meters per second. So I'll do the same for the final velocity which is 8 kilometers per hour and I'll come up with 20 over 9 meters per second. So now that, I've, now, that I've, now that I have u and v, I'll come back in my third equation of motion which is v squared equal to u squared plus 2s and I substitute for v which is that, substitute for u which is that and substitute for s which is that. So I think you realize that I have only one unknown and that is a so when I simplify further, I'll be able to come up with my A being equal to negative 0.0145 meters per second squared. So, but remember they asked for deceleration, so you'll come and conclude that deceleration will be equal to 0.01545 meters per second squared. So acceleration will be negative, deceleration will be now, the negative is not there because this negative on acceleration implies that there is a deceleration so basically that's what they wanted in this question and now let's see how the five mass would come about so the first mark would be for conversion for converting initial and final velocity to meters per second square to, to meters per second then m1 will be for substituting in this third equation of motion then m1 is for you to divide this division to make a the subject and b1 is for you to get the output after dividing then a1 will be to conclude that the solution is that without this negative without this negative so basically that's how the five marks would come about in this question and now let's go to the next question so now shall go to question three and question three says it came from unit 2012 paper two question four and part a says show that the final velocity v of a body which starts with an initial velocity u and moves with a uniform acceleration a consequently covering a distance x is given by v being equal to open brackets u squared plus 2x close brackets raised to the power a half so let's start with that part so this power half is the same as square root so just that from the first equation which is v equal to u plus a t t will be equal to v minus u over a when i make the subject i come up with that then i have to remember that average velocity is equal to total distance over total time o and and can be given by total distance over total time o by average of the total of the two velocities initial and final so final plus initial over two will also give you average velocity so but I remember i have my t which is equal to this so what i'm going to do i'm going to first cross multiply to get x being equal to G v plus u over 2 multiplied by t's and of that i'm going to substitute for t to come up with this now then so you realize that for the numerator there is difference of two squares so i'll come up with x being equal to v squared minus u squared over 2a and when i rearrange i'll come up with v squared being equal to u squared plus 2x but remember they want v so when i put square on both square on both sides I'll come up with v being equal to in brackets u squared plus 2ax everything raised to the power a half and that's what they wanted in part a now when we go to part b part b says that find the value of x in a if 
v is equal to 30 meters per second u is equal to 10 meters per second and a is equal to 5 meters per second squared so what i'm going to do i'll go back i'm going to rewrite the equation i can start from here well, then i write and after that i'll substitute so where there is v i'll put 30 u i'll put 10 and a i'll put 5 the, uh, when I simplify, I come up with 800 being equal to 10x, and when I make x the subject, I come up with x being equal to 80 meters. So that's what they wanted in this question, and now let's see how these five marks can be obtained. So M1 is good at this step of equating the average velocities. Then another M1 is good at this step for substituting for T. And this one is good at this step for simplifying the required expression to get the required expression. Then when you go to part B, M1 will be good at the substitution level and out A will be the output. So basically that's how the five mass could come about. So now we shall go to question four. Question four says, question four was got from neighbor 2010, paper two, question two, and says, P2 R are points on a straight road, say that P2 is equal to 20 meters, and Q R is equal to 55 meters. A cycle is moving with uniform acceleration, passes P, and then notices that it takes him 10 seconds, and 15 seconds to travel between P2, P and Q and Q and R respectively. Find his uniform acceleration. So what we are going to do, we are going to first make a simulation of the information given. So that the three points P, Q and R. Then we have a cyclist so that this who is going to pass through these po three points. So in the question, they said that a cyclist moving within some acceleration passes through point P and then also that takes him 10 seconds and 15 seconds to travel between P2 and QR. So this cyclist, when you run the simulation, the cyclist will pass through points P2 and R. So with that, we can make a sketch of what has happened as follows so i think we realize that he, he will pass through point p with a velocity u then pass through velocity point q with a velocity v2 and point r with a velocity vr now this according to the information we know that time taken to move from p to q will be 10 and the distance is 20 meters then time taken to move from q to r is 15 and the distance is 55 meters so with that inform information, you can now go and answer the question. So for motion P2, when you look at this P2, for motion P2, we have T being equal to 10 meters, 10 seconds, and S being equal to 20 meters. The initial velocity is U. So when we substitute that in the second equation of motion, we shall come up with 20 where there is x you put 20 where there is t you put 10 like that and we remain with two unknowns which is u and a and when i simplify further i'll come up with 2 being equal to u plus 5a and therefore when i make u the subject u will be equal to 2 minus 5a Now that now we shall go to motion PR. So for motion PR from P to R, you realize that the distance moved will be fifty sorry twenty plus fifty five, which is seventy five, and the time total time taken will be ten plus fifteen, which will be twenty five. So we shall come and still use the third second equation of motion but for that motion it means that distance moved will be 20 plus 55 which is 75 and the total time will be 10 plus 15 which is 25 so when i substitute in the second equation of motion i'll come up with where there is s i'll put there 75 
and where there is t i'll put 25 where there is t i'll put 25 so i'll still remain with the two unknowns that is u and a when i simplify i'll come up with that and when i make u the subject i'll come up with u being equal to 75 minus 312.5a over 25 and when i split the split the numerator i'll come up with u being equal to 3 minus 12.5 a. So now I have two equations and two unknowns. That means I can solve simultaneously. Remember, all are equal to u. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to equate the two equations and I'll come up with 2 minus 5a being equal to 3 minus 12.5a. So I think we realize that I have only one unknown and therefore when I make correct like terms, take this one this side, it will become 5 minus 12.5. Sorry, I'm going to take this 12.5 this side to come up with 12.5 minus 5 to come up with 7.5a then I take this one this side to become 3 minus 2 to come up with 1 and when I make a the subject I come up with a being equal to 2 over 15 meters per second squared so basically that's what they wanted now let's see how the 5 mass could come about So this B1 will be for equation 1, then this M1 is for you to substitute in this equation, then B1 will be for equation 2, M1 will be for equating, and A1 will be for the output, which is the acceleration they want. So basically, that's how the 5 marks would come about. So that brings us to the end of the solutions. I believe you have marked yourself and checked your progress. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave you with another set of questions. By this time, it will be linear motion involving two particles. We have been dealing with linear, mo linear motion involving one particle. Now, next will be when there are two particles in motion. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and be reminded that the solutions to the assignment left will be available in the next video. So if you haven't yet subscribed, please click on the subscribe button below this video. And also, if you know of any student who is not yet on this platform, please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like Facebook and WhatsApp so that you can all benefit as a family.